This is the Huawei Rovio Mobile Spy Robot. With Rovio, you can monitor your home or work from anywhere in the world that you have a web connection. This is the Epoch EEG headset and is made by Emotive Systems. This 14 electrode headset can detect brain waves and facial gestures, and its built in gyroscope can detect head movements. In this demonstration, I will use it to pilot my Rovio remotely using just my mind and facial gestures. This is the emotive status screen. It has visual indicators that light up when I use my mind and my face to trigger various robot movements. Three of the indicators have gray sliders next to them. The arrow on each slider indicates the threshold which when reached triggers a robot command. At the bottom is the horizontal LED bar that lights up when I turn my head to the right and to the left. On the left hand side is the vertical LED that lights up when I move my head up and then down. These two head movement detectors allow the system to detect when I shake my head no and when I nod my head yes. Over here is the vertical indicator that lights up when I clench the left side of my jaw. And here is the one that lights up when I clench the right side. To move the robot forward, I concentrate on a very specific feeling that is a combination of worry and sadness. A very strong feeling that is felt mostly behind the eyes and does not involve the muscles of the jaw. This big meter here shows the intensity of my concentration. Now that I've shown you how I detect different signals from the Epoch headset, I will show you how they are mapped to different robot movements. On the left side of the screen is the emotive status screen and on the right side is my Rovio robot with my Pleo baby dinosaur robot next to it. First, a quick turn of my head to the left makes Rovio do a quick short turn to its left. A quick turn to the right executes a fast turn to the right. A little bit left again to center Rovio. I tilt my head up and Rovio's camera arm lifts up. I tilt it down to put the camera arm back down. I clench the left side of my jaw and Rovio turns to the left. Rovio will keep turning left as long as my jaw clench is above the threshold point. Now I clench the right side of my jaw and Rovio turns to the right. You will notice that this time the concentration meter popped up too because I got nervous. However, the concentration meter passed its threshold point after the right jaw clench was already detected. Since I've programmed the system to ignore commands that happen shortly after a command has already been triggered, Rovio still successfully turns to the right. Now I concentrate on my worry plus sad feeling and Rovio moves forward. The blue light labeled cruise control has popped on because the system is set to lock forward movement on if the concentration meter is above threshold for about a second. This feature saves me from having to hold the worry sad feeling when taking a long drive forward. This diagram shows in detail the different components that make up the communications link that allows me to pilot my Rovio remotely with the Epoch headset. The Epoch headset sends data to RoboClient a free software program which is running on my Windows XP laptop along with Skype. RoboClient converts the data stream from the Epoch headset into different robot commands. RoboClient, with the help of the Skype API, sends the commands over an active Skype video call to another copy of Skype that is running on my home computer, a desktop PC running Windows XP. Also on my home computer, which is acting as a server, is another free program called RoboDance. RoboDance has an active connection with Rovio and sends the robot commands to Rovio which makes the robot move. All the while this is happening, Rovio is actively streaming audio and video and sending status updates back to my laptop over the Skype video call. The entire process runs seamlessly in the background as part of a remote session. Now let's take a test drive. On the left hand side is the emotive status screen. On the right is Skype with an active video call in progress with my face in the lower right hand corner below Skype's video feed. There's RoboBoa, my robot snake. I'll lift up the camera. Now a big turn completely around. 
That's Darwin, my Wowie Alive chimpanzee head. A slight adjustment to the right to center him in the view frame. Let's get closer. A quick head shake to stop, followed by a fast look to the right. That's Rex the dog. A quick head turn to the left and it's back to Darwin. A big turn to the right to check up again on Roboboa. I'll move closer and then swing the camera to the left once I get there. A quick look to the right again and whoops, too far. A final quick look to the left and we're done. If you are wondering why I use Skype, here's why. Normally, Rovio requires a port to be exposed on your router and the use of a dynamic domain name service to make Rovio accessible from the web. But by using Skype, we eliminate those two burdens completely. Also, by using Skype, Rovio's audio and video are encrypted, allowing safe access from a public Wi-Fi hotspot. Especially since your login details can no longer be snooped wirelessly. Robodance also allows you to control many other consumer robots besides Rovio, giving you the ability to control them with your voice, a Nintendo Wii remote control, and with scripts, and has other features too many to mention here. To learn more about Robodance, Rovio, and how I implemented the Epoch headset, visit Robodance.com. Be sure to sign up for the mailing list. To learn more about the Epoch 14 Electrode EEG headset from Emotive Systems and available software, visit Emotive.com. And finally, for more great tech tips, articles, and product reviews, visit ExtremeTech.com. While you are there, please check out my in-depth articles on the Emotive Epoch headset and software. And my other article, where I describe in detail how I use the Emotive Software Development Kit to create this demonstration and video.